The next speaker is from the private sector. She's one of the founders of the International Service Design Agency, Doberman. Please welcome Lisa Lindström. Every meeting is like a kiss. I like that. So it's time for my kiss. I'm Lisa, uh, I'm a mother of two, and I run an experienced design firm called Doberman, like you just said. If you really, really knew me, you would know that I have a very hard time with poorly designed meetings. You would see me sit there and try to be part of it in the way that the person intended it to be. And if it's a meeting that is important to me, I will very, very soon try to influence it. So since I am such a person, feel, if you don't feel this meeting is working for you, then, you know, let's work it out together, please. That's kind of the way that I like it to be. And, uh, Let's hope that I can reflect a little bit on why I think that we should spend some more time and passion into designing meetings. First, I need someone who can listen and be a little, little bit analytical at the same time. Do we have a person who could help me out? Sure? Where? Hi, good. So can you, because I also have another problem, and that is that I very, very, I, I kind of, of change during a presentation. So can you please draw like a line, this is a line of time, can you please put down some, you know, interactions that I do throughout? So if you can log that throughout this, and then you can help me out in the end and tell me what I did. Thank you. So, uh, why are meetings important to me? Uh, Doberman is, it's really, really ugly, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Doberman is a, a company who works in the discipline of design. And design, I didn't really like that kind of step in saying that, you know, on top design and strategy is looked like it was the greatest stuff. I, I'm not a fan of that. I think that design, from the broader sense, when we use it as a methodology in helping companies to perform better, to the design as craft to help them deliver products, is what we love to do and hopefully can deliver often to our, our uh, clients. And clients can be a new insurance company, a startup that recently launched in New York because of Obamacare. They invented a new insurance company to help out people who actually never ever had healthcare insurance before. So such a great product to start thinking about if you never ever had to interact with a health, you know, that's not a fun product to interact with. Uh, how can we make a product that is built out of the sense of making it easy? Or we can work with a bank to try to move them into becoming more customer-centric and help them explain what type of services do you need to have and what type of methodologies do you need to do to perform better as a bank. Or we can, do, we can transform an old organization like Swedish Television uh, where we recent, or not recently, where we did SVT Play, or uh, try to help the thinking of employers of the, the very, very hard question of if you know or maybe suspect that someone is mentally ill, how do you bring that up? Because if you're physically ill, it's not a problem. You go there and you take like whatever bandage or something. But how can you actually start? That's, you know, people are equally ill in mental illness. So together with an organization, uh, the first aid kit for mentally illness was invented. It's a prototype and it's out right now. Okay, now this is going to be even uglier. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so what we do is, uh, 
we try to design experiences uh, for the full customer journey for our, our companies that we work for. And the tricky part is that all our clients do have an existing brand, an existing organization, an existing technology. We kind of need to work with that. But actually, it's people. Everyone that is going to try to deliver on a great customer experience needs to work together. And actually, everyone needs to meet. And I think that is why I think designing good meetings are essential to our business. It's important that we help those people <laughs> to have value in their meetings, to actually be productive in their meetings. That's why I think we should really spend some time to think about what can you do. So here's my take on it. First, you need to prepare. So since this is a meeting, I phoned up one of the stakeholders and asked her a couple of questions. So I said, can you describe the target audience? Yes, I said, everyone at the conference will be an experienced design professional in some way. They mostly work in culture, the public sector, consultancies or agencies. Some are also programmers, a few are academics. Almost all of them spend time regularly in improductive meetings, I guess. Um, all are likely from the global north, but ages, cultures and faiths will vary. And since the presentation is a little bit fucked up, I'm going to read the next one because you... you and, and I also asked, so what do you want them to feel? That we have more beep meetings than we previously assumed. And bonus points for also feeling that the first day has been beep and that having dinner will be beep. Great brief. So I tried to design a meeting with you to deliver on that. So I think that putting a little bit of that love into details in designing a meeting is worth it. And sometimes you're super ambitious, like my colleague Linnea here, who is doing meeting books uh, for one of our clients. And sometimes designing a room to make that room getting the right context for the people who are moving in there is very, very valuable. Here we were going to do an innovation workshop with a media company who needs to improve their products. And uh, I don't know if you can see out of this picture what type of, of product it is, uh, I can tell you. It's, uh, it's the magazine Lantliv. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's, uh, how would we describe Lantliv? For people who live in the city who think they are a person that lives outside the city. Yeah? Uh, and this is what happened. So we designed this room. The meeting was two and a half hours. I would say that's the most productive innovation workshop I've been into. Because what we had was we had everything in the room that we needed. We had kind of the feeling, we had the right people, we had their product. We actually took their magazine and posted it on the walls. <laughs> so they felt very secure. Okay, this is our area, this is what we do. And if you work in editorial, this is very common to you. You put the pages on walls. So it's like it's a comfort zone for them when I'm then going to kind of push them and say, I'm going to kill your darling and now we're going to innovate something new. So designing the room can be a very good tool. Another good tool actually I learned last week when I was in New York working with New York City on an innovation program where my client brought pipe cleaners or whatever they are called <laughs> because she said you planned for a four hour meeting. I brought pipe cleaners because 
you know, people cannot learn in four hours without doing something with their, with their hands. She's a great designer. Oh, she didn't know what we had planned, though. But, but, you know, they were there and people did a few things. So preparations are key to a meaningful meeting. Secondly, like we've done a lot today, we need to warm up. You're pretty warmed up now, aren't you? I think that we've done many examples today, and I would love to bring a lot of them to the meetings that I will do in the future. But one thing that I always want to do is to check in. So every time there is a meeting where I'm involved and my two colleagues over here know it, <laughs> we check in, which means that everyone in the room needs to say something. And it's kind of then you've all <coughs> cleared your voice, <laughs> someone heard you. you, you're participating in something. And usually I use a question <laughs> so that they could think about something that will make us a better group. So if it's a, a beginner meeting where maybe we never met before, I will ask something simple like, what's your favorite website or something? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like on the nothing side of things. <laughs> but if you like a team of people who worked a lot before, then you can start to talk about what did you bring into this meeting today? Or where are you today? Great input to have a great meeting. Setting the tone is also important, I think. Like, what if I actually, what would it you know, happen with me if I took off my shoes before I'm entering this stage? What if you thought you were going to Doberman to talk about innovation and cool stuff, and someone said, take off your shoes before you enter the meeting room? These people never done that before, I can tell you. There were a lot of resistance. But why did the design director of this project do that? Well, he had worked with those people for a long time. He felt it's time for us to go a little bit deeper. He didn't have the deep, deep date thing. <laughs> It's time for us to create something new here. And it also, he was thinking about the hierarchy in the room. It's happening something now with the hierarchy, doesn't it? <laughs> so something needed to happen in that room. And they actually worked the full workshop without shoes. I'll see if I can bear to do that. Also, I think setting the expectations for some of you you already know it. But sometimes we actually tend to forget to say out loud what we're expecting of this particular meeting. So I think spending a few minutes on that is good because then also the facilitator can adjust <laughs> and to make it into an even more meaningful meeting to the people that this facilitator is, is in charge of. Another thing, and this I think you already know too, but can be said over and over and over again, and we've done a little bit of this today too, is that, you know, swim like a jellyfish. It's like big group, small group, big group, small group, big group, small group, <laughs> and that's so productive. I went to a board meeting, no strategy days with a board of a very, very influenced big public organization and we set for the first day 16 people for six hours and I was the only one thinking oh my god this is expensive <laughs> why couldn't we take out you know people into smaller group and you know that would have been so many greater strategies out of that us at 16 saying okay now it's my turn and then when it was my turn I totally forgot what to say because it took so long so Work like a jellyfish is always good. And as designers, we have a super strong tool. We can visualize. We can help out in meetings 
to synthesize what people are actually saying and make it into something that is easier to understand. So if you have a designer in your team, use that person. Don't just say that, oh, you can participate. Make that person maybe live, visualize what's going on. So now we've done this several times, but it's time again. Close your eyes. And I want you to think of a meeting or a workshop or an activity that you think was very meaningful to you. Maybe it was even productive. Maybe it was a place where you felt I can achieve anything I want when it's like this. And think about where are you in that room? Are you standing? Are you sitting down? What are you doing? Who are the people around you? What are they doing? And how do you feel? Can you put some words to yourself? How do you feel in that room? How would you say that the atmosphere is in, in this meeting? What is the overall feeling of this meeting? And you can open your eyes. And if you have a pen and a paper, then just scribble down what was that feeling? Do you need some more time? No? I never went to a school where we learned to design meetings. <laughs> I don't know if such school actually exists. I think that the only way that I have learned and that I can, you know, ask you to learn is to try. Try, try, try. So even if it sometimes is a little bit scary to ask like a super cool startup in New York, to do role play <laughs> where someone needs to play the bride. Actually, the largest investor needed <laughs> to, <laughs> to play the bride. How could I know if it's going to work if I didn't try, right? And we, out of this particular workshop, I got so much empathy within the investor for the end user the bride in this case. I wonder if you can tell what they are designing. Anyhow, so that he is now a spokesperson of the bride. We need to think about the bride in this product. <laughs> I don't think that that would have happened if he did not walk in her shoes. But since he had to defend her when we were going to decide what the minimum viable product was, he's the spokesperson of the bride. Or maybe you actually need just something, a little piece. Like an, I learned today, there were so many great words today that I learned, that's, you know, alibi. So, so maybe this is an alibi uh, to put on your future glasses, if you're a bank again, and think about 
what would the future look like? And they were super crazy because they were in that frame. I learned today that there is a whole world out there. I didn't know it. We just tried. Uh, but you gave me the good words for it. Another thing that I tried last week that was super scary to me, and it, it's in our new, newly opened New York office again, and we're working for you know, the state, New York City, and it's very hierarchical, and it, they are very unused to crazy Swedes who think that everyone is equal and everyone is allowed to contribute. And I was thinking, so if I'm going to try to make them become more innovative, how can I kind of visualize that thing? What if we would do like a physical stakeholder map on the floor? What if I ask them who is the most influenced stakeholder and that person needed to stand in the front here, you see him here? And you know, stand there to say everyone, it's actually me. I mean, he, it, it's him on paper, but to show everyone in the room that it's him and the people around are then, were then grouping into what type of goals that they will defend in this process. Then I did another thing that was that everyone in the core team then had to adopt a stakeholder. I don't know how it goes yet, <laughs> but you know, stakeholders is like, Someone's, sometimes you just have to, you don't meet with them. So I said, adopt a stakeholder and then ask that stakeholder how that person wants you to meet. Instead of saying, you are going to meet in a workshop in three weeks time. What happened, and I didn't expect this, is that four people are going to have beer with their bosses to talk about the project. And another person, he's going, they are going to email because that is the, how that stakeholder wants to have it. A third person is going to do a walk and talk. I think, I mean, there, it, it's a great, I, I am going to elaborate on this one, I think, even more. Using uh, design methodologies in the hands of people in a meeting is also good. Working with PwC is not easy. <laughs> Uh, they have their processes, let me tell you. Uh, so we also, when working on their new offerings, we use the zero box method. Have any of you used it? No? It's a great method of, yeah, you've used it. It's a great method of having people to kind of decide on the core in an offering or in a product. So they, you know, they have a cereal box, and why should we pick your cereal box out of all the cereal boxes in the store? So then you had to kind of, be a little, be a little prioritized and get something really pushy out of that concept. And also, you know, working in, in, in designing meetings, sometimes we think uh, this will be a long process and then we will include the users and that will take time and we'll have a separate meeting for that. Or sometimes users are in the room or in the next room or here when we were working with, with uh, NRK, uh, the TV channel in, in Oslo, they are in the street <laughs> because it's the public. So you can try out your ideas, you can walk outside the meeting and have a new meeting with the user. So they had to put on, they had to, because they had needed to be formal, so it says NRK on their vests. <laughs> and they went out and they said, hi, I'm from NRK, I want to try out an idea on you. They never done that before. Because they think we need to have focus groups. But empathy, you can always work with empathy for your users in a meeting. Do I dare to do this in a sales pitch? Because, okay, here I'm not sure if I can recommend this because we didn't get this business, first of all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, it's more about, again, trying, trying, trying. So we actually, when we met Twilfit, we said we will throw a great meeting with them where they have to do an instant insight, call a customer. They had to adopt a customer by putting on a shirt, putting on the shirt who that customer was. And then again, you know, think from the customer's perspective and not only from the organization's perspective in the sales pitch. Kind of dairy thing to do. Uh, but what I want to show in this case is that I think that you can apply methods like this in, you know, all different kinds of contexts. Not <laughs> always will they work. 
but also that it doesn't have to be very time consuming or expensive. This one we went to Myrorna and bought the t-shirts for 10 kronor for 10 crowns. Then, you know, planning of this took 60 minutes. We had a lo-fi uh, dressing room. It's only pictures and a few you know, clothes from, from someone's uh, yeah, closet. And they were, they were shocked <laughs> about how much time we had put into thinking about them. And usually when we sell, we put a lot of time into thinking about our clients. I think it's also important, I hope that you've seen this, that you need accessories. <laughs> you need to have tools for people to use to really, you know, stimulate their creativity. So when working with this first aid kit, we asked the organization that we work for to design the product. This is great design. These are great prototypes. And it's such a good thing to put things like that on a table. So is this really for every meeting? I mean, you and I, we were talking about before that a meeting could be a meeting with a chair. I didn't really follow, you know, I, I think what I'm talking about are meetings where someone call to a meeting and someone is responsible for that meeting. And I hope that you are really responsible for meetings that you call others to attend. So it's that type of meetings. But can you apply this to a boardroom? Or is it culture? Can we, if we go to Indonesia and work with their public radio, can we use the same methods? We've tried. It worked. <laughs> so I think so. Uh, I'm on five boards. They very often look like this. And also, I'm, I'm not a chairman of any board, so I have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, how can I then influence what typically looks like this? This is a, a board meeting with a Nobel Prize media company. Can you see something in this picture? Old boys. But can you see the cereal box? <laughs> Because I kind of said, I volunteer to do an exercise. <laughs> uh, the strategy part here in the next meeting, the two hours, since it's going to be a little bit about digital, and I'm kind of a digital guy in this board, everyone, yeah? I'm, I can be responsible for it. Then I put the cereal box in there and I said, so what is Nobel about? Can you draw that on the cereal box? people who attended these strategy days said these were the most efficient ones. And I kind of, that's a kind of my point. When you're talking about money, Johanna, first of all, we are making money. And second of all, I think that if you don't design great meetings, you lose money. You have people who are just, you know, sitting there thinking about something. They're kind of on another meeting, maybe on Facebook. <laughs> maybe they are in their head writing an email. Maybe it's, you know, that's very, very expensive. But actually, sometimes not having a meeting is very, very efficient. So we asked, and we're a very participatory company. And, and I asked, so, you know, I did a similar thing, I think, where people had to close their eyes, and I, I talked about flow. And when do you have the most flow? What, what, what is it? What can I, as an employer, you know, help you to give you more flow? And people said, with kind of, everyone said, if we have less meetings, <laughs> because meetings are disturbing my flow. So we now have Flow Fridays, the meetingless Friday, every Friday. You're not allowed to have meetings. And as a consultancy, that was a little bit daring too. What would the client say? If a client wants to have a meeting on Fridays, 
do you dare to turn them down? Well, usually we do. Because actually, again, though they are also people, and they don't always see meeting as a kiss. <laughs> they also want to have no meetings Fridays. Where you can sit wherever. Here, Hanna, she sits at home working. And you can ask Johan and Martin, who are my colleagues over here, if they like it or not. <laughs> we are still in prototyping. We've done it, I think, for eight months. Um, so now it's time for the balloons. And I want you to take the balloon. Oh, am I, maybe I'm not allowed to stand over there. But stop, 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 no, no. So instructions first. That word that you ha had and that you wrote down, how a meaningful meeting for you should feel. Can you write that? Blow up the balloon and then write that word on the balloon and then make a note and hold your balloon. Okay. There's a few people who need a little bit more time, so ble please be patient with them. So, when I say three, I know it's the end of the day. When I say three, you throw up your balloon and take another balloon. Okay? Are you all ready? Okay, are you all ready? Yeah. One, two, three! Woo! Make sure you don't take your balloon! Make sure everyone gets a balloon! Woo! Send some balloons to the back! And to the front! Help out. Woo, and be careful. <laughs> Maybe there is a no meeting balloon. Now, now, since you are such great, listen, such, since you're such great designers, talk to the people around you and look at the, um, like the feeling that you have on the balloon and talk like three minutes on how can you design a meeting to achieve that feeling. How can you design a meeting to achieve that feeling? Can I please ask you to wrap up? I think that you have more to talk about tonight. <laughs> I felt the energy. Uh, can I please ask my secretary to come? Uh, what did you see? Can you, should you stand up and show them? This is what I uh, wrote down. Um, yeah, do you have any reflections? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, th this is not the boom. Um, reflections. Well, it seems to me that uh, you should have a, um, a... Well, we were just talking about it here, a purpose. Um, and I try to understand that. Re reflections? No, I think... Uh, it you, seems you, like there was a lot of stuff I don't know going what to, on. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. I've got uh, value in the meeting. You have to prepare your target and your room and have the context be, um, be uh, the contextual comfort. That's what it was, designing your room. Doodle materials, it should be fun. People should have a good time. I noticed a lot of people were laughing in the, in the, uh, the photos that you, you chose. The one thing that came across to me over and over again here, and I, kind of on the bottom line here, is uh, what does the customer need and want? For example, the health care and the, mm. the bank and the mental health uh, clients you had. Keep checking in and visualize. That means keep coming back to the others to see what, what, how they're doing. Be experimental, try things out. Um, again, I wrote down here, represent the client slash user empathy with the other 
And uh, yeah, again, look after the people who are actually doing the work. Uh, the, so give them Fridays off from meetings so they can maybe process it. I like the bit about the subterfuge where you sneak in the cereal box to the, to the, to the thing too. There is a, that's tied together with your first aid kit. Yeah. So sometimes people don't know they need first aid maybe. True, <laughs> true. And break, I, break habits of presentation. Thank you. Do, do you agree? Yeah. I think, yeah, but maybe this is kind of showing something that we attend to meetings and we experience different things, don't we? Because my, th this looks so very professional and a lot. My kind of thinking was, this is kind of how I thought it was going to be. I am going to ask you to draw, and I think I'm going to take off my shoes, and then I'm going to have you to, and then you're going to be a little bit tired, and then, then it's the time I need to throw in a little bit of interaction, and that's when you close your eyes, and then now it's really late in the afternoon. I had to do, I talk to you, and I need to do something like, like a balloon or something, and she is, yeah, and then we, <laughs> you know, that, that, th this is my design, and I think that, you know, however you intended a meeting to be, you never know how it ends up. So don't forget to always evaluate and give feedback. So now I want you to stand up. And since it's all weird, I'm going to, to, to ask you three questions. So what Johanna wanted it to be, to feel that we have more power over our meetings than previously assumed. Those of you who think that you have that after the session, sit down. You have more power over your meetings than we previously assumed. Those of you who feel that the first day was valuable, sit down. The day or the session? That the day. So everything. That ev everything. <laughs> <laughs> now you're giving feedback. Uh, and that having been at the end of the final, that, that, that we need to ask tomorrow. And if you would have been standing up and not thinking that you know anything of this was valuable, that would have been super valuable to me. Because as a designer, I always need to train. And for me, this was such a good practice. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lisa. Is the catch box ready in the room? And then over here. Yes. <laughs> hi, Jen. Hi. Uh, I, I want to ask you if you were uh, uh, tasked with arranging a meeting uh, where there's a lot of conflict, uh, the two parties are angry, there's some history, history. A little slower, sorry, I can't hear. There's a conflict. There's, there's a, a meeting. conflict. Okay. Yes. It's an innovation meeting, but there's a lot of conflict between the people there. Yes. Go. Oh. That happens a lot. Yes. Uh, I think that, again, the jellyfish method that we've used a lot, that we divide into different groups. So if you know that there are two different groups, then if you say that I've planned the meeting so that we will, you know, switch groups, which may, you know, that makes you talk into some, you know, about something in a smaller team, and you're going to change something at the same time, <laughs> that kind of, you know, the conflict kind of tends to turn into a little bit more of a reasonable thing rather than, you know, people standing in different directions. Um, another very, very uh, experimental thing that, uh, that a colleague of mine did was that he had a conflict uh, between, okay, how can I put it? The, the people on the floor and their bosses. 
And he did a very clever thing where he said, the person who's standing closest to the, the customer, be in front, <laughs> and the farther away you are from the customer, equals the bosses. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so he visualized again in the room physically, you know, where the power was, and that handled a little bit of the conflict question. But there was just two prototypes of things he can do. Oh, what happens if you don't know about the conflict until you're in the meeting and you've come in with like balloons and some some things like that, and they hate each other? Yes. <laughs> or 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 what if they don't even want to start doing anything? Like I had this checking in. You know, my first thing. Huh. I'm not checking in. This is not important to me. Why should I do that? What do you do? I usually use the card, well, I called to the meeting. So this is my meeting. <laughs> and either you, you know, we can play a little bit <laughs> with the tools that I brought and see what happens before we make the judgment of this was an invaluable meeting. So. Mm -hmm. I, I, I try to dare to play with the tools that I brought, and even if there is a, a, a conflict coming up, like I did, uh, I did a, a, a pitch recently where the, the it was not a good thing again. Where actually, you know, our workshop methods made the conflict in the room more important than us. So, you know, they were kind of la 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 la, and we were sitting, ah, we are flirting with you, but you're apparently not in the flirting mo mode. That was a valuable meeting. Because that told us, okay, they are not ready to work. They need to solve that before we even go, go in. So, but mm -hmm. it's, did it uh, answer? There was a question over here. Here? No. no. Oi. It can take it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm sitting here in seat 31, and seat 31 has an unfortunate disadvantage that there's a spotlight that shines right at me. Uh, which severely affected my ability to uh, interact with your uh, presentation. And I, huh. I, I think of that as a metaphor for, uh, I share your obsession with, with uh, being concerned with the minutia of, of meetings and small irritants and trying to get the details right. And I'm wondering about alibis for, you know, should I have spoken up at some point and said, excuse yes. me, there's, there's a, a yes. spotlight in my eyes. Yes. And, and, and how would I have best done that in a way which didn't appear that I was just the annoying guy in C31? Great. Oh, I love that. I would have been right with you. Great. I would have been right there oh. too, but I, I actually stopped standing up and saying it because I think it, they wanted to have, have you backlit for the video. So ah. I was considering moving. Ah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. That's What's Lisa's response? Yeah. So it happened uh, 10 years ago. We were working with Vodafone globally, and we had 16 countries in the room, like United Nations. <laughs> and there was a language problem in the room. So it was not like, not all everyone could participate because they didn't have the language. And I was very, very worried about that thing. So we gave them cards, green, yellow, red, where yellow said, wait a minute, I'm not following. So I should have been giving you the yellow cards so that you could have just raised that. You're not an annoying guy by saying I'm not following because you're giving me valuable information as a facilitator. I cannot help you, because you know, from my angle, you can see me. <laughs> so so you, you know, we need to have a yellow card or something that will make, you know, that lower the barrier for you to ask for help and not destroying the design of the meeting. And of course, I think here also there's the additional layer that it's not necessarily Lisa who needs to uh, uh, su supply you with that alibi. Uh, the, your grievance is, with us, right? <laughs> she didn't set the spotlight there, I, I don't think. Uh, so this is, this is an, actually an incredibly valuable thing to know because that's something that we'll need to solve by, for tomorrow. Do we have one more question from the audience? Uh, over in the back, right there, where can the microphone go that away? <laughs> Hello? Mr. Beksari, yes. Hello again. Uh, so sometimes meetings are a place where you find solutions. Yes. And sometimes they're actually battleground for power struggles where participants have uh, hidden agendas. Yes. How do you deal with that? Uh, oh. Uh, you have two minutes. Yeah. So no big deal. Uh, <laughs> so I think that 
and not, not to walk away from the question, but I think that a very strong thing uh, to move, move out of certain agendas could sometimes be to view it from another angle. So very often I think that those agenda is not concentrated on a customer need, it's more of some other stuff going on in the organization. So if, and I think that is not part of my job to solve that, then I can address, you know, what if we would concentrate on the customer's problem or the user's problem or, or the citizen's problem instead of talking over here that you don't have the right resources, blah, 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 because that maybe is something else. So, and then very often what happens if you're over here, then the, the kind of the value of this problem yet less important, at least, is, is my experience. So, so I have a follow-up on yes. that, which is, I think maybe if you, if you open up a room to different kinds of communication that, that people in the organization are, are used to, maybe, do you think there's a risk or is your experience that that makes all kinds of things bubble up? Yes. Yes. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been asked so many times, oh, can you be our new management consultants? Or can you be our new, oh, it's you, oh, your meetings are great. I've never received so much feedback. <laughs> and I think, you know, that is for someone else again. Mm -hmm. I mean, some, some, are, some parts of it is within the transformation an organization needs to do to be able to deliver a better product. But I need to sometimes think about, you know, what did they ask me to do? Yeah. And if other stuff bubbles up, very often the boss is in the room <laughs> and I can then, you know, after, you know, give them a little bit of advice, maybe you also need to... Maybe like a phone number to a facilitator <laughs> who does that bit, kind of thing. A little bit like that. <laughs> yeah, happened several Fantastic. times. Thank you so much. Lisa Lindstrom. <laughs>